Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Our Amiga CD32 with its TF330 50 megahertz 030 accelerator scores a rather impressive 9.61 MIPS in SysInfo. But is that really the best we can do? You see, if you take a closer look at the board itself, Stephen Leary, Mr. Terrible Fire, who designed it, he wrote something very tempting on here. This is the crystal that controls the speed of it. 110 megahertz might be possible. Now, before you get carried away, it is that clock speed divided by two. So at the minute, this is a 100 megahertz crystal divided by two, give us our 50 megahertz CPU clock. But 110 megahertz might be possible. 55 megahertz overclock this CPU slightly. Could we possibly break the 10 MIPS barrier in sysinfo? Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's try and overclock our TF330. If we're going to overclock this TF330, we need to get this crystal off. Now, before we jump into that, 110 megahertz. They do not make a seven by five millimeter, 110 megahertz crystal. If they do, I can't find it. I've been all over the world and the closest I can come to is 108 megahertz. I cannot find a 110 anywhere. So 55 megahertz is not going to be possible. We're going to be aiming for 54. And while we're at it, should we also try a 120 megahertz crystal and see if we can push this thing out to 60 megahertz. We're going to try the 108 first and see how we get on. Right, getting this off. We could use the heat gun like we did last week when we recapped the 1200. But first of all, I want to try just the iron and a little bit of wick to see if I can get this off. I got new tips for the iron on the soldering station. So hopefully these work nicely and we can get this freed up. Well, I've sucked up as much of the solder as I can there. And unfortunately, the crystal is still pretty well on there. So it looks like we are going to have to use the heat gun. So like before, when we did the recap, plenty of this uh, high temperature tape. I'm going to mask off the surrounding area. There is one incredibly small surface mount capacitor here, very close to this. So I'm going to put a few layers on this just to try and protect that and all the other various bits and pieces. Right, let's see if we can get this off. So same as last time, we have our temperature set to 340 degrees and we have our, our speed set to three quarters, six out of eight on this thing. Right, we're just gonna be heating the crystal, try and melt the solder and hopefully get this free. Right, there we are. That's the old crystal off. I'm 
I'll keep that to the side for now. Keep it safe. <laughs> Just burnt my finger. Yeah, do not try this at home, kids. I am a complete idiot and have no idea what I'm doing. Or something like that. So we need to get the new crystal on. First of all, I'm just going to tidy up these pads a wee bit. Alright, let's just remove all this high temperature tape. See if I can get it off in one bit. So we can put it back on again later. If this doesn't work, then we need to remove our crystal. Or if it does work, then we need to remove it to try the faster clock speed. Ah, whatever. Doesn't matter. That stuff's cheap. We can always replace it. Right. So mounting the new crystal is fairly straightforward. Dot on the board here. If we'll be able to see this or not. But there's a small dot in the corner of the crystal here. Line up with dots. And that's it, let's get it soldered on. Well, it's a wee bit rough, but it is on. I'll try and tidy it up a wee bit off camera here, then we'll let it cool down. We'll stick it in the CD32 and let's see if it posts at 100 and 8 megahertz. Okay, so we just have the base of the CD32 here now. I've removed the top section from the CD drive and all. Just because I want to get plenty of ventilation around this. So it's nice and cool now. In fact, I was able to tidy it up. Looks pretty good now. If I do say so myself. Right. Let's see what it does. Is it going to post? Genuinely, I have not tried this. I have no idea what's going to happen. Come on. There we are. I think we'll try it first without the CF card. Let's try it like this. We'll need video. Right, let's see what happens. Well, that's certainly promising so far. Let's attach our CF card. Let's see if she'll put it on the workbench. In fact, I need to connect my keyboard and mouse, don't I? Hold on a second. Right, let's boot her up again. Everything seems to be working pretty good. Right. We'll have to try this info, don't we? Oh yes! 10.38 MIPS. We have beaten the 10 MIPS barrier. It's now registering our CPU speed as 55.8 megahertz. We have successfully overclocked our TF330. Happy days. 
wonder has it affected the drive speed at all. This was about 5.2 megabytes per second before. Let's see. 5.5 on the cusp of now. So yes, this is faster as well. Our machine is faster all around. I'm very, very pleased with this. We've broken the 10 MIPS barrier. Happy days. I am over the moon with that. Right. Let's not celebrate too prematurely though. We do need to stress it for a wee while. So I am going to load up. Let me see. What would do? Have I got Frontier on this? No, what we'll do, we'll run a demo. Relic. This should pretty much put it through its paces. I'm going to let this run. And let's see how it gets on. Right, so I've had the machine sitting here running for about one hour. I've run the Relic demo a couple of times, so that's it coming to an end here now. And uh, had a quick game of Doom, ran a couple of other demos, things like that. I went and got my heat gun, just to see what sort of temperature the package is getting to. Now we probably should have tested this before overclocking, to give us something to compare against. But we didn't do that, so let's just see what temperature the chip is at here. So we're sitting at about 40 degrees. And to be honest, that is pretty much the maximum temperature I have been able to record off this over the last hour or so. So I'm pretty happy that this is 100% stable at 108 megahertz. Even though Sys Info was reporting 55. And I think we can call that overclock a success. Right. We need to make a decision now if we are going to try the 120. That would take us up to 60 megahertz clock speed. To be honest, just because this was so successful at the 108, I'm of two minds whether to try this or not. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it to the vote in the comment section of this video. If you want me to try the 120 megahertz on the TF330, let me know below. Or if you think we should just leave well enough alone at the 108 megahertz and be happy with what we've got. Then I will leave it at that. Let's just have another quick look at sysinfo. Ten point three eight MIPS. We've broken that ten MIP barrier. That's really what I wanted to achieve. I am more than satisfied with what we've got so far. But as I said, if you want me to try the 120 megahertz, let me know and I'll give it a go at the weekend, sure. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen, please hit that thumbs up. Why not subscribe so you don't miss trying this, if we do. And uh, I'll see you next time.